So welcome to this uh, uh, live session on electronic waste management issues and challenges. So as you know, this is a four week course. It's a small uh, version of the NPTEL course. Uh, as we have a uh, few courses, which are four weeks, few are eight and few are 12. So this is a four week course. And, uh, and we are working on, um, we, we are working, this is the first live session and actually this will be the only live session. In a four week course, we only have one live session. So um, we'll get started with this. Uh, as you all know, uh, as part of the live session, you are provided with a uh, Google uh, seat where you have put on your questions. So we do have uh, uh, those questions in front of me and uh, I'll get started with that. Uh, so once I'm done with those questions, I'll start looking at the YouTube uh, live questions. So now if you are putting questions, don't put it on the Google sheet, uh, put it on the YouTube live. I have that open as well. And, uh, and if time permits, uh, I'll just look at few questions from the discussion forum, uh, which myself and our, my, our TAs of this course, they have picked it up uh, for uh, uh, which has come up in, uh, for discussion few times on the discussion forum. Okay, so let's get started uh, with the first question, uh, which is uh, from uh, Nitish, uh, Nitish Nonia. Uh, his, uh, uh, his question is, what are the best way to manage electronic waste management? So as we have talked in the class as well, I think uh, if you watch the class uh, videos, uh, first of all is uh, a, a, like our e-waste management rules also talks about that. So we have to collect this e-waste separately and uh, then it should go to a authorized recycler uh, where they essentially what they do is they will dismantle the electronic waste. They will put plastic separately, glass separately, metal separately, and those can go to the regular recycling market. Uh, the problem comes with the printed wireboard. And as of now, in India and many developing economies, this uh, printed wire boards are actually going into mostly into informal sector. Although we have several registered recyclers in the country as well, and uh, but still a good amount of that does a very uh, less a fraction of that goes to registered recycler. Most of it is actually going to our uh, uh, this uh, uh, your um, uh, the informal sector where they are doing it with all these aquaregia and then different kind of uh, 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 treatment they do to recover some of these precious metal. But that's not the way it has to, it should be done. Uh, there is pyrometallurgical process, there is hydrometallurgical process, and there are some other uh, innovative processes are also being developed, bio-leaching. So all those things needs to happen, and that's what happens in a formal recycling uh, system where they try to do some sort of uh, uh, recovery, heavy metals and other precious metal recovery. It ha it's, uh, so that's, that's the way it has to happen. So that's uh, what uh, uh, possibly the answer to your question. And it is there on the course video as well. So if you just, uh, I think if you watch it carefully, you will find it there too. Then there are two questions. There is uh, Kartika Devi, she doesn't put any questions. She says no question. And then we have Afreen Parveen and also uh, Karuna Kumari. And then uh, there are two more, uh, which is uh, Far, uh, Farhana Parveen and then Mah Mah Mahvish Rejwan. All of the questions are the same, so that's why I'm taking it uh, uh, together. And their question relates to which type of questions will be there in the exam. In fact, two questions are exactly the same. And then one, one person says, tell me something about the exam. And one person is saying that, sir, whatever you have taught in lecture, is that the only question will come in the exam? Uh, in, or uh, question will be related to, or from elsewhere, the question will be in the e-waste examination. So again, as you know from the NPTEL course, if you are taking it as the first time, I would, I'm telling you, but if you are, uh, if you have taken it other courses, you are aware that typically what in the NPTEL course, what, what the, the way we prep, uh, do the course delivery and the, the quizzes that are set. Uh, so the exam is more or less similar. So there are the, whatever the difficulty level of the quiz, so similar difficulty level will be in the exam. So exam will have mixture of theory questions and theory questions and problem questions. We did some problem questions in the class as well, uh, in, the, in the video, so similar stuff will be there. So if you, again, I will tell you that if you can go through those four weeks of lecture videos carefully and, uh, and go through the PDF, uh, you have the access to the PDF of those slides, go through them, 
that's good enough for you uh, that will be good enough for you to uh, for the exam okay so don't worry too much uh, about uh, the exam if you just do all that you'll be fine and all the best for your exam now there is a question from sirnavas s uh, his question is oh, okay that's not really a question <laughs> he was he is telling that why why you study a lot sir i don't know whether i study a lot i who i wish i could study a lot uh, based on uh, uh, different things that we have to do as part of an academic job. Uh, many times I feel like I'm not able to study as much as I should, uh, but uh, it's it's a habit, and uh, it's a, you should develop that habit too. And whether whenever you get a chance, you should study different uh, different things because that's that's what uh, to develop knowledge, isn't it? We have to get uh, uh, knowledge, and knowledge comes from learning, uh, from reading books, uh, reading uh, from uh, authentic sources. Uh, this uh, social media is a good place to get some knowledge, so could get, get some information. But many times those informations are misleading, may not be correct. So you don't, you should not rely things on social media, but you should rely on authentic sources, uh, books, authentic websites. That's where you should get your information from. Okay. Uh, then there is a question from uh, uh, Dr. Jaya Dube. And uh, pretty long question, so let me uh, kind of put in a summary form. She is asking that, give me more insights on the contradictions uh, where the stakeholders involved in upstream section of waste management practices is actually asking people to reduce their consumerism habit and waste generation. So basically, at one hand, what she is trying to say, the one hand, we are trying to say that uh, we should reduce consumption, uh, we should uh, that will lead to uh, uh, lesser waste generation, but on the other hand, the recycling industry actually more wants wants uh, more waste to be produced. So the waste recycling business can grow and survive. So if we have more and more waste, a waste recycling business will grow and they will survive. So how the concept of circular economy will work under that scenario and similar kind of situation you have mentioned in one of the lectures uh, that most of the registered e-waste recycling plants are not running up to their optimum level. Uh, because the, most of the waste is going to uh, informal sector, not to this recycle, uh, recycle, recycler. So that's her first question. We'll discuss that and see the second question. We'll come to that in a minute. So in terms of uh, uh, your uh, question on that, yes, uh, uh, that that's a that, that that's a uh, kind of dichotomy. You can say that on one hand we want consumerism to be not there, but at the same time we think that uh, uh, it should be. Uh, we should have um, more like recycling industry to, to flourish. They need more and more waste. But if as and kind of you answered this question in your uh, in your question itself, because you, as you mentioned that uh, only a little fraction of produced e-waste is going to the to the recyclers, to the informal to the formal recyclers. So so if we get entire of these waste going to this formal recycling system. There, most of the plants will actually be running in good capacity. So, yes, at one hand, we have to reduce the consumerism uh, because ultimate goal of uh, of a circular economy is to try to minimize the waste, try to go towards zero waste. That's the whole concept, isn't it? It's a path towards zero waste. When we say zero waste, we are we don't really mean zero zero. It means actually moving towards zero waste as much as possible. So. But as we move towards zero waste, of course, we need to look at our consumerism. We have to look at uh, our uh, uh, like waste generation. Uh, but um, the amount of waste which is already out there, the amount of waste which will be there in coming years and decades is actually more than enough for most of this recycling facility to work at optimum level. But since they are going into this informal, I'm talking mostly from an uh, electronic waste point of view, since it's mostly going into this electronic sector and all that, uh, sorry, informal sector and all that, we our plants are running below capacity. So, but uh, yes, you're correct. Uh, gradually, we have to move towards uh, uh, having less waste uh, being produced. And that's the ultimate goal of circular economy. So now the second part of our question is that, is there any sub rule under e-waste management rules 2016 or even in waste management rule 2016, clearly talking about the concept of circular economy? It is not there yet. 
uh, it is there are there are some documents as far as i know it is not there yet if somebody has a latest information if the government has recently come up with something please uh, let me know but uh, i was uh, looking for it uh, looking at your questions uh, earlier today and i could not find so uh, probably it is not there as of now but at the same time we do have several uh, initiatives uh, fiki has come up with an initiative where they looked at the circular economy from an indian pers indian perspective how circular economy can be helpful for the indian economy there was there is a indo european union uh, document which talks about again circular economy ellen macarthur foundation has a document which talks about circular economy uh, challenges and opportunities in india and um, in, in fact, Indo-Australia has a docker has uh, some things on circular economy, critical materials, especially related to um, those materials which are there in electronic waste. So there is some uh, joint uh, government statement on that along that line. So yes, uh, there is no sub rule yet, but there is a lot of talk and a lot of uh, few documents uh, which is coming up uh, in this area. So yes, maybe in few years from now we may see some some rules also coming up. Very recently, you may have seen that Honorable Prime Minister of India, uh, our uh, 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 Modi ji, he, he gave a talk on, I think it was on 19th of February, that two, three days ago, uh, where uh, there was an Indo-Australian hackathon on circular economy. And uh, he uh, gave a talk and uh, I got a chance to listen to part of the talk as well, where he was talking about all the concept of circular economy, resource recovery and all that. So it is a, it is a hot topic. It, and uh, today or tomorrow, we will have something from the government on this side as well. And as you know, that, but the industry has already started working on this. There are a lot of good examples if you uh, uh, circular capital and there are a lot of other uh, com companies out there which is uh, helping many of our companies to go uh, adopt this circular economy practices. So things are already happening at the industrial scale as well. Yeah, but uh, as to a specifically, is there a sub rule? Not yet, may come uh, soon. Now there is a question from uh, Ross and Saxena, uh, very, uh, 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 he's always there and uh, I really appreciate uh, his uh, zeal for knowledge. He's, uh, he attends all the live session in all the courses that he takes. So he talks about that due to serious issue of climatic actions and global warming, government has taken initiatives of introducing electric vehicles and also promoting it by giving tax benefits and other attractive offers to lure public buying those vehicles. But is this a step of government actually going to decrease pollution out there because much of the arsenic and lead containing batteries will be disposed of in current years. There is a difficulty in recycling those batteries, but it is easier to produce a new one. Eventually, there will be a problem in case of those batteries are not properly recycled or simply thrown at landfill sites. So is this the step of government to promote a vehicle a large extent is good or not? See, you have kind of answered your question, part of the question you answered there as well. On one hand, of course, it's a welcome step. See, isn't it? It's a welcome step that we are trying to go towards electric vehicle, trying to reduce the vehicular pollution. Now, at the same time, we have to work on a few things. We have to make sure that the energy source, uh, which we are kind of working towards that, that makes sure the energy source that we use is clean energy. So it's more of renewable energy, energy which has lesser environmental footprint. Uh, so solar, wind, hydro, and those kind of energy, not too much on coal-based fossil, like coal-based fossil, like uh, fossil fuel energy uh, coming essentially coal-based energy. Uh, because if we, if we continue to do that, the benefits from the electric vehicles may not be that much significant. Uh, because uh, we have to do that life cycle assessment. In fact, we did that life cycle assessment two years ago based on what, if, what was the energy mix at that particular time with some totos and other stuff which is run with the electric vehicle. Uh, we found that with the present energy mix of the two years ago, whatever was the energy mix, uh, moving from regular vehicle to electric vehicle was not going to help that much from an environmental, uh, uh, environmental point of view. We are shifting the problem from one place to another place, but we are not we are, we are not really solving the problem. But that was two years ago. A lot of things had happened in two years. Now, if our uh, energy mix is becoming more and more renewable, we are getting into more and more renewable energy source, it will become better. So electric vehicle is a good step, but we need to do a lot of other things associated with that. We have to make sure that energy source is clean. 
we have to make sure that the batteries which is uh, which gets disposed from these electric vehicle which contains several of these heavy metals and other stuff they should be uh, treated properly they should be managed properly if you drop if you just throw it at the landfill site then the all the effort that you got from electric vehicle you can reduce the air pollution but then you will increase the land for soil pollution and water pollution so that we need to have a check on that so it's, uh, it's again uh, your question to promote e vehicles is a large extent good i would my answer would be yes it is a good step but we have to do a lot of other subsequent steps as well to make sure that the benefit of this step is really realized. Okay, so I hope that answers uh, your question. Now, I, again, we have a question from uh, uh, Dr. Jaya Dubey. He is saying that, can I get some literature where I, can, where I can find which nation has the most effective legislation for e-waste management apart from inclusion of informal sector with the formal, sir, don't you think other provisions could also be suggested under 2016 rules. Can't ULB be clay pair in door-to-door -door collection of e-waste just like MSW rules or solid waste rules? Because still many of us have no clue about disposing our various discarded electronic items at home. For instance, I'm living in a small military station at Delhi. We don't even have access of Kabadiwala. Uh, so if containment board or ULB workers of that area comes once in a month or quarterly to collect all our discarded items, then we'll definitely pave the right path for their disposal. I agree, like uh, I agree with you that uh, yes, uh, many, uh, we do have to have some more clarity in terms of how this electronic waste should be collected. In fact, uh, if you look at the solid waste management rules 2016, they do talk about household hazardous waste as well. There are three categories which has been defined there, wet waste, dry waste, and household hazardous waste. Now, wet waste and dry waste are being collected on a regular basis. At some places already they have started, other places also they will start. I'm talking about in general in the country. At many places they have started doing that and many, many more places it needs to happen. Uh, in terms of household hazardous waste, I don't, so like in, in, in say for example in our area as well i have not seen household hazardous waste being collected uh, by the municipal by the ulb authorities uh, in in our area uh, but they do for wet and dry so so similarly uh, when they do this household hazardous waste i would uh, i would totally agree with you that yes probably e-waste can be included that in two maybe it's a once in six months collection uh, once uh, it's all once in three months collection depending on where you are what's the type of you we can do a survey done and based on that we can decide uh, what uh, those uh, things uh, can be done there are literatures out there we will try to put it uh, on the discussion forum if we forget please remind us uh, i'm uh, i'm like uh, the, the tas are online uh, they can uh, they are taking a note of that but they, they still if i forget if you forget to put you some literature please put a note on the discussion forum we will do that so the household has they see the e-waste collection does happen at some places at a designated so there is a collection event which happens uh, for e-waste collection i think i showed you some pictures of that as well uh, from uh, uh, florida uh, several years ago the picture that was taken by me so there are uh, where these things are done there is a uh, drop-off centers uh, which is clearly earmarked which is advertised so you and i can go and drop off it is not too far within the municipal area so you can go and drop it off your e-waste over there so those uh, things uh, are uh, definitely there and we have to adopt those things in india too in india still uh, we, we yes finding the authorized recyclers uh, calling them up and doing it it only happens in a uh, few big cities but other uh, cities and town we still have a long way to go in terms of having uh, e-waste properly collected so yeah, good question, uh, Dr. Uh, Dubey. Uh, on the, actually, both of your both questions are pretty very good. Uh, helps uh, to clarify a lot of stuff here. Now we have. Uh, I think that's not a question. Uh, there is no question there. So I think probably she forgot to put the question. So now I'll get into uh, in our uh, 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 chat box. Uh, so let me uh, look at the chat, uh, and then if you have some questions from the chat. So we will uh, take it from there. So it's a, uh, sir, please suggest what we do with e-waste. The entire course, that is from uh, 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 our Srinivas uh, Zanwar. 
uh, it is that's what uh, the entire course is all about, isn't it? We have talked about what to do with e-waste, like how it should be uh, collected, and uh, and it's a, uh, a like what what should be done, like there should be a formal collection, and uh, we have to do uh, we we should try to do uh, re like a resource recovery from the e-waste. So. Uh, having mostly using the formal sector. So that's what I was talking about. We can get informal sector merged with the formal sector for a proper e-waste management system. So that's, and then I think I, in, in the questions that I answered for Dr. Dube, uh, that may have answered your other part as well, like how what we as a person can do with electronic waste. Now there is a question from Sir Mr. Bose. Please recommend a book on e-waste management and life cycle assessment. Uh, uh, um, uh, Sir Mishta, my request will be that, uh, uh, please put this question on the discussion forum because uh, uh, let's say I don't remember a uh, top of my head. There are books out there uh, on life cycle assessment, uh, but uh, I, uh, the details I, we can put that on the discussion forum. I don't uh, uh, like I don't remember the entire detail of the book right now, but please uh, put that on the discussion forum. We will answer that question there. Don't uh, if uh, okay. So the, you should get the you, we will make sure. Like I'll make sure you get the answer there. Now we have a question from uh, uh, Siva Chandra Kumar, Siva Charan Kumar, sorry. How to involve people also to reduce e-waste from ground level, Achha, ground level, okay. Uh, so that's a question on, uh, uh, in terms of uh, how to get uh, people involved. So that's again, uh, uh, especially uh, it's it's a uh, there are several NGOs which uh, work on that. So depending on uh, uh, if if you're talking from a municipal government point of view, from the municipality point of view, it's education, education, education. We need to educate the common people. We need to educate the common people that what are the pros of having a good e-waste management system. And what are the cons of not like what are the if you don't have a good e-waste management system, what are the all the pollutions that can happen? In the if you remember from the course, we did talk about uh, uh, the air pollution issues, the water pollution issues, and the and the soil pollution, the health impact. So what we need to do is to make a nice flyer, a nice educational flyers taking information from these uh, PowerPoints and PDFs and uh, video lectures that you got, you need to make nice flyers in a simple language. Don't make it in a tough language. You make it in a simple language which a common person can understand. And take that flyer and distribute it, talk with the local municipality and get them on board. Uh, you need some funding as well. So they will, uh, and then you will, uh, that's, that's the how you need to get it to the people. So as people will understand that this is something wrong for us, we should not do it, then only you will get them on board. See, uh, right now what happens is electronic waste, uh, this e-waste, uh, they, uh, uh, when you, this informal sector people, then they come to you, they, they pay you say 400, 500 rupees for an old cell phone and you uh, give, give it away to them because uh, you think that uh, you, are, you got some money out of that. But then what happens with that e-waste, we don't know. What are the way, how it is being uh, managed, how it is being recycled, we don't know that. So we have to have those information. So part of the, what, uh, what I would suggest uh, uh, Sivcher and Kumar is you make those maybe small videos, make a little bit of, uh, 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 is, is in terms of uh, you, may, you make your uh, uh, flyers and talk to people and talk to people and that's what uh, and get them and force your municipalities to adopt uh, to implement the e-waste management rules. E-waste management rule is already there. It's uh, we actually in terms of rules and regulation, the rules is there. We even have that EPR concepts and all those extended producer responsibility. All those concepts are there. But again, the implementation becomes a problem. So get the uh, educating the people will only is going to help. That's what I have seen in other countries as well, helping where people, when the people get uh, educated, then they force the, uh, our, your board commissioners and others and try to get uh, uh, those stuff uh, in, uh, in like they're working. Okay, so now the next question, we'll move to the next question. Uh, it's uh, Hitendra Bhai Gandhi. Uh, which kind of certificate required to collect only e-waste? 
it's not actually uh, uh, sorry it's a bansi bansi gandhi bansi hitendra bhai gandhi so uh, which kind of certificate required to collect only e waste you have to get the e waste recycler permit okay so you have to get the uh, e waste uh, uh, recycling uh, permit uh, which you have to get from central pollution control board and from your state pollution control board if you are working with the state so you have to get a e waste uh, uh the collection collector permit and e-waste if you want to do the e-waste recycling you have to get the e-waste recycling permit you go to the uh, you uh, on google put e-waste management rules uh like indian e-waste management rules towards the end of the rule there are the forms and other stuff which you need to fill in you need to have certain infrastructure uh, based on how much waste you will collect and all that so then you will get a license uh, to do that uh, I, if that's the question you have uh, that's what uh, it is all about it does not require you to have any educational certificate uh, it's basically it requires more of a license for that uh, manish bharadwaj has two questions back to two questions of mbb comment he says the political involvement is must in e-waste regulation e-waste regulation is already there manish it's not that uh, regulation is not there we talked about that regulation in the class uh, and in fact the newer regulation is also out there now so in terms of uh, it's it is yes the implementation probably i think you are referring to that uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a implementation which is becoming a problem so implementation uh, uh, is uh, uh, is what you need to uh, look at in terms of uh, uh, your uh, uh, in terms of your uh, uh, like a, that's what probably you are talking about when you are saying that uh, uh, uh your uh, political involvement yes you have to uh, we have to get uh, political uh, involvement we have to get our uh, uh, like local uh, uh, our uh, local uh, uh, yeah uh, what commissioners and other people involved so that's what uh, essentially i think that's that's what you are probably uh, talking about in terms of uh, getting this uh, local uh, uh, people involved in in terms of this air pollution so uh, sorry in terms of uh, your uh, e-waste regulation now uh, the second comment is as prime minister has banned the usage of plastic bag actually it's uh, we have not banned plus usage of plastic bag as of today uh, there was a there was a, yes our prime minister did announce that we will possibly ban uh, the use of plastic uh, in Oct that was in october 2019 if i remember second october 2019 uh, but then uh, later on we did not do that uh, the problem with that, see, plastic as uh, there is a, uh, a parallel course on uh, NPTEL on plastic waste management. And just uh, last week, we had the first live session. And since that's an eight week course, we will have another live session on that as well. So I'm, I'm not sure whether you have taken that course, uh, but we have not banned uh, plastic uh, in India as of today. Uh, yes, we are trying to reduce the usage of plastic and we are looking at trying to phase out single use plastic. Uh, from uh, usage as soon as possible. The problem with, see, if you want to ban plastic bags, uh, there are certain places they try to do that. Uh, but uh, uh, like, uh, okay, you're talking about plastic bags. So yes, in some places they have, uh, in some states have banned plastic bags, but uh, they are talking about, they are the thin plastic bags are banned. But uh, during this COVID crisis and end, again, the plastic is coming back. So yes, there is, uh, but uh, it's not the blanket ban on plastic bags. Uh, there is uh, uh, the thickness less than 50 micron. Less than 50 micron is, uh, those are the bags uh, which is uh, banned. Uh, so the, I got uh, confused when you said that uh, uh, Prime Minister has banned the usage of plastic. Because not all the plastic bag has been banned. It is only the thickness of uh, uh, less than 50 micron is which is uh, uh, banned. Anything more than more, anything more than that is not banned right now. Okay, so what is talk again? Manish has the third question on what is toxic pollution index? So toxic pollution index, uh, there is a, there is an air pollution index and there is a water pollution index. So there is not there is no term as such toxic pollution index. Uh, 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 there is we do talk about air pollution index. We do talk about uh, uh, our uh, like a water quality index. So they those index are based on the different pollutants which comes to the environment. So based on the pollution uh, which pollutant which comes to the environment based on their health effects their environmental effect a certain form of weighted average is taken uh, so if you again uh, 
uh, we do talk about these air pollution and water pollution index in uh, some other codes which we have in terms of uh, intro to environmental engineering. Uh, that course is also there, like environmental engineering and science. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. We do talk about that uh, in uh, great detail on that as well. So basically what these are is you take different pollutants and then you take a weighted average, but then that weight is different uh, based on what is the negative impact for that particular pollutant. And then we come up with a index and that index gives us an idea of how bad is the scenario in terms of water pollution or air pollution. So it gives you a number. For example, if you look at the air pollution, air quality index, if you look at your mobile phone, uh, if you look at your mobile phone and uh, uh, you look at your, mo in, for example, in my mobile phone right now, if I can see, it's showing us an AQI of 138. So, and that gives us for the city area. I don't know uh, is whether it is giving me for within the campus here. Uh, so that is uh, uh, your, uh, uh, those air quality index is basically tells me that what is the status of air quality in this particular area. So similarly, we have water quality index, which tells us what is the water quality. So there is a range. Uh, for example, for air to air quality, zero to fifty considered very safe. Fifty to hundred is considered okay. When it when it goes to one hundred to one fifty, it is considered let's say it's a slightly bad, and then so on and so forth as you can see the different uh, AQI. Most uh, uh, like these days, Android phone, I'm not sure about the other phones, but Android phone, the lit, the, it is showing on your phone, your uh, uh, mobile on the right hand side on top, you can see an AQI showing up, uh, which uh, uh, you can refer to for the air quality. I hope it answers your question. Otherwise, please uh, uh, let me know. Uh, then we have Swarnajotu, Swarnajoti Pal, which says, sir, please upload material in PPT format. Uh, I, the, the problem with this PPT format is that since the material is too big, uh, with all those pictures and other stuff uh, that we use in the in the PowerPoint, it becomes quite big. And then when it becomes big, it becomes very difficult for you to download, uh, especially for many of uh, you who has uh, uh, not that good internet connection. Uh, so that's the reason we put it on a PDF format. And uh, if I, I think that they are the single page PDF, if they are not single page PDF, we'll try to put that in single page PDF. Uh, but uh, in the PPT format, see, it may work for you, but for many students, it will be a problem in terms of downloading that. So uh, banned plastic, uh, single, what is that? Uh, banned plastic in country or reduce the use of plastic. Which one is better? See, banning is only, uh, banning only works when you have alternative. See, we have banned dowry when? long, long time ago, isn't it? But unfortunately, that is still is being practiced. But that's a different things altogether. So banning actually doesn't really work uh, that much unless you have proper alternative. When I say proper alternative, it has, uh, you have, uh, you have uh, economically viable alternative, which can do all the job that plastic does. So as, uh, although this course is on electronic waste management, we always, these days, plastic gets so much of media attention. So probably we are, we have, I'm getting some questions on plastic. I'm answering them anyway. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, plastic, one thing we have to remember, other than the single use plastic, other than single use plastic, which is problematic, I totally agree with that. Most of the other plastic is going to stay because we don't have alternative. We don't have alternative to those plastic. So as of now, as of now, we don't have alternative to those plastic. So since the alternative is not there, we will have to use those plastic. Single use plastic, we should try single use as the name suggests, one usage. One usage after that, it gets uh, uh, discarded. So we have to uh, try to uh, like uh, uh, phase out the usage of single use plastic. But banning plastic in general, you go to a hospital today uh, or the entire this during this COVID situation as well, the plastic was used so much. Uh, go to hospital, if you visit somebody in hospital, if you, somebody is in ICU or another, you see a lot of stuff made out of plastic. The computer that I'm using in front of me has lots of plastic. And the, mouse, the keyboard, mouse, everything has lots of plastic. So we cannot really ban the plastic. Yes, we should try to phase out single use plastic as much as possible 
and for the other types of plastic and when we when i say phase out single use we have to provide viable alternative and for the other type of plastics what we need to do is we need to focus on having proper plastic waste management infrastructure see the problem is not plastic as a material problem is the plastic waste and i say that all the time whenever i am asked this kind of question that it is the plastic waste which is a problem plastic as a material is not a problem it you can say that your plastic as a material is leading to plastic waste yes so as paper isn't it paper waste or textile waste so there are a lot of since plastic is so much out there it is creating a we get a we see a big big issue out of that but if we have proper plastic waste management infrastructure that's what is needed having a proper plastic waste management infrastructure so that our plastic is managed properly does not go into uh, into our uh, waters and uh, it doesn't uh, go into the dump sites from dump sites to the creeks to the river and finally to the ocean there are a lot of stress is lot of emphasis is going on ocean cleanup a lot of uh, you see a lot of you just google ocean cleanup for plastic plastic pollution ocean cleanup you will find lot of initiative then you will also find uh, some initiative in terms of uh, plastic uh, clean up in the rivers we have to have a a like we need a lot of initiative in terms of uh, having uh, uh, plastic uh, like let's let's work on so that the plastic does not get into uh, into the rivers and water in the water bodies at the first place and for that to happen we need to have proper plastic waste management infrastructure uh, at the municipality level so i hope that clears that uh, uh, question now devashri has couple of questions uh, do you think that municipal stakeholders need compulsory regular professional training on all kinds of waste and their management i totally agree with you on devashri on that and that i'm also telling you from my personal experience i was involved in looking at dprs of many uh, many uh, cities and towns and when i look at those dpr i have also visited to some of these ulbs i have talked to people at the ulbs unfortunately they have they are they did never actually got this kind of training uh, this that's why the municipality uh, workers municipality professionals they need this kind of training i would i would rather i i hope that they are taking these kind of courses uh, this this uh, this present offering we have close to 5000 student i think 4700 some students registered i hope uh, uh, many of these municipality people are registered and taking this kind of course or it's a small course not a big one but uh, yes we need to do these kind of training programs uh, in terms of uh, having a workshops or training programs where we we basically sensitize this municipal workers tell them because it's not since we we many times we blame them for all the problem but the problem is they were never got trained if you look at the waste management hardly you see even in in the civil engineering program where the environmental engineering comes in most of our uh, uh in uh, most of our uh, courses so in uh, in the civil engineering uh, 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 program a, we what we uh, even a student can get a civil engineering degree without having a proper waste management course and talking about even from nits and iits we do have electives we have electives on waste management but we don't have a course on waste management as a core course we have uh, so that's uh, so people are not trained in this area and they, when they uh, work they don't know and they uh, and that's the reason uh, we see a lot of problem as well because they are not aware uh uh then second part is because there are regulations and rules but the difficulties lie with implementation so how can this implementation can be effective and long lasting so if implementation part of it to what devasri you asked in the first place if we can train these people make them aware of what are the different technologies out there what are the drawbacks of not managing this e waste properly or waste management in general properly so and at the same time uh try to uh, talk about like how to how to, how in terms of implementation see every ulb around the world will have limited budget but with that limited budget what can be done so there has to be some brainstorming session on those with the rules and regulation that has been provided to us uh, from uh, central pollution control board or ministry of environment or ministry of urban development how to implement that at the local level 
So, of course, training, as you asked in the first part, is really going to help. Uh, but at the same time, we have to do what is known as the integrated waste management plan. In the country, we are uh, like uh, when I was in Canada, uh, I was I was co-chairman of the town where I was living. I was co-chairman of the integrated waste management plan for that uh, committee for that particular town. As a solid waste management professor at the local university, they had they had me on there as a co-chairman. But we have people from business. We had people from uh, uh, ward commissioner level people. We had NGOs. Uh, we had some environmental uh, consultants. So it was an entire team which we which we looked into and developed a 25 year plan for integrated waste management. What can work for our town, and that is has to be site specific as well. These rules and regulations coming from say higher up, they are more often guideline kind of thing which we actually we should look at because there are a lot of local challenges. See, we many times we cannot really implement those rules in total, and once we cannot implement, we think that oh rules cannot be implemented, so why why we should do anything about it? That's where we lack. We need to have a decentralized approach in terms of implementation of rules as well. A big picture should be the same. There should be something which there is no compromise on that. That that part of the rule should be there. But then at the local level, we are we should be allowed to tweak the implementation so that we can make it more useful for our local condition. And there has to be a uh, group of people, different stakeholders from the society, from the municipal professionals who should come up with a. 25 year plan or 15 year plan or whatever you do and then you revisit that plan every 5 years so they do the revisiting of the plan every 5 year in the last 5 years what worked what did not work why the things did not work what went wrong what we should do now so that it will work better so that kind of exercise is needed then we will have proper implementation uh, we, we have a still a long way to go uh, I hope that we will have this kind of discussion uh, happening and then we have these kind of committees formed. Uh, what happens many times is people sitting in a nice AC room who has no, uh, with all due respect, uh, who has very little knowledge of the ground reality. They sit down and make all these uh, recommendations, but they are not really aware of what will really work on the ground. And uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's the drawback. And, uh, and that creates a lot of problem. Uh, Rosen uh, Saxena is talking about uh, uh, in Bhopal, municipality is giving incentive to people who give EVS to his collection center. Minimum condition is 3 kg. Indoor and Bhopal are doing very good. Yeah, that's uh, indoor, of course, is uh, uh, so as I said, Roshan earlier as well. So many, many ULBs are making a lot of effort uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, it has, we know from the Swachh Sarvechan survey as well, uh, the, they are uh, taking a lot of effort and then things are improving. Uh, but uh, there is a, uh, uh, things has to uh, go further in other cities as well. So Devashri has, uh, uh, okay, so she's uh, talking about, she has given some comments there uh, on, uh, on Roshan and all that, okay. Uh, Devashri is talking about that, she has similar experience in Agartala and Rurki municipality. Now, Roshan is asking, uh, plastics are beneficial if it is a waste management is done properly. Today, plastics are used in cars. Yep, that's correct. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, good, Roshan, uh, you are uh, helping me. <laughs> uh, it's uh, You are a good student. Um, uh, we'll say the pick. Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, yeah, decentralized is need of the hour. Thank you for such an insightful answer. Thank you, Devasri, for asking these questions. Actually, uh, I, 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 like, uh, I always tell students that ask question, isn't it? You should ask a uh, uh, question because that's what uh, is what, what we are. See, we, I, have, uh, I have one hour for you. So you should take entire benefit of that one hour. So whatever comes to your mind, just ask. No question is a dumb question. Okay. So whatever uh, things come to your head, ask those questions. That's fine. And I will answer to the best of my abilities. For some question, I may not have answered, but that's okay. I will we'll try to find answer and put it on the discussion forum for you. Okay. And uh, we, sh we should also encourage people to ask question. And we should not uh, discourage people to ask question. Okay. So that's, uh, uh, I think uh, there is no further question I see on the chat. So we still have around 10 minutes left. So what I will do is I'll try to take a couple of questions from the discussion forum that I have uh, pulled 
up. Uh, so I'll talk about those. And then if uh, I see if a further question comes up on the chat box, we'll take that. So again, I encourage you to put the questions in there. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, our, uh, in terms of the questions from the discussion forum. Uh, one question is uh, uh, from that, why are white goods excluded from the category of e-waste in North America? This classification of certain electronic goods as white goods because they are white, has it anything to do with specific of being hazardous or not? Or its potential of neg negativity affecting the environment and human health? Is there a specific region? See, these white goods are too bulky, isn't it? So this, what happened uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, this white goods definition in North America? So when they started looking at uh, these uh, household appliances and other appliances which are typically uh, painted white, those refrigerators and uh, dishwashers and your uh, uh, like a big uh, oven or your, uh, uh, your uh, like a uh, what's it, this washer and dryer and other stuff, they were all uh, refrigerated. So they were all, uh, initially they were white in color. Now they come in uh, various colors, but uh, uh, earlier it was mostly white in color. And since they are too bulky to uh, have to put it in other with other electronic waste like laptops, cell phones, or your uh, uh, desktops and all that. So they were put in a separate category and then resource recovery was being done from that. So that's that's what the reason they were put on white goods. There were no any specific region for that as uh, be just because they were white, they were put there. And since it was put in that category before e-waste collection is started in a big way in North America, they are still ca called under white goods. So, but electronic pockets from electronic components from there is still recovered and processed uh, as an electronic waste uh, uh, as well. Uh, look, okay, then uh, how and what stage the waste composition analysis is done? Production stage of product or a disposal stage? See, waste is a waste is a waste when you dispose it. So, if you are talking about production stage. Uh, then it is, uh, if you are uh, talking about the waste being generated at the manufacturer plant, that would be the production stage. See, waste is when you discard something. If it's a product, it's not a waste. When you throw away the product, it becomes a waste. Or while making the product in the factory, you may create some waste. So if you're looking at the waste being created at the factory itself, you will do the composition analysis at the factory at the production plant. If you are looking at the waste that is being coming into the environment from the municipality level or from the industrial level, that you will look at the uh, disposal which is coming out, uh, uh, disposal which is getting out from these uh, stuff. Okay, so, and uh, let's uh, still, uh, let's go back to this question again. Now, which are the formal sector players in e-waste management in India? There are several, and it is there in the course. I think we have listed that in the course as well. Uh, there is uh, e-Parisara, there is eco-reco, uh, there is one in Kolkata uh, that I know of. There could be some more now. And you can find that. Again, uh, if you go on uh, Google and say formal sector e-waste management companies in India, you will find the list over there as well. So there are several. It is We have already talked about that in the class. Uh, so in the video, so it is there. So, uh, and I gave you some examples of that. Then uh, I wanted to do a mini project on e-waste. Okay, I think that has already been answered uh, uh, by on the discussion forum. So I'll just take uh, some other question. Uh, my question is there, is there any act that people government should pay for recycling of e-waste to prevent from adverse effect from them in the environment? So are you talking about, I think you're talking about waste disposal fee or for e-waste. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, like the as part of the EPR extended producer responsibility. Uh, the companies are supposed to uh, fund the e-waste recycling and e-waste resource recovery. The companies who make e-waste pro electronic products. So when they make electronic products, so when they sell it to you and me, uh, they will incorporate the fee in the price that we pay for when we buy those products. So that's how it works. In some countries, they have separate e-waste disposal fee. Like, uh, for example, if you buy a laptop in Canada, in Ontario, uh, you when you buy the laptop, you will get the laptop price. At the bottom, you will get uh, uh, the e-waste disposal fee for e-waste management fee for this laptop. And that's a substantial. If I remember the one I bought uh, like 2012 or 13, 
at that time i had to pay around 36 or 40 dollars and the laptop was 1400 dollars or something like that so it's a good amount of money uh, which goes uh, for that uh, in india there is a little awareness segregate drive which e waste is also dumped how to recover such e waste uh, we talked about that uh, why e waste isn't recycled fully we says only 50 to 20% again we did, did talk about uh, as part of some other questions that uh, you can uh, uh, look at uh, 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 in terms of uh, uh, like a, we, we, you have to have proper collection of e waste and going into the proper recycling uh, sector uh, proper recyclers and that's we we talked kind of talked about that as well so that's uh, i think we have already answered that uh, how does data about e-waste is presently collected it is there in in the course so some of this question actually makes me a little bit worried so it is there on the course where we talk about that you can do uh, material flow analysis or you can do the usage analysis you do a survey you try to find out what is the typical years a particular product gets uh, uh, into the waste stream so based on the number of uh, years the product is being used we can estimate say if certain number of product is sold today uh, what is the typical life of that product and then uh, uh, in uh, uh, four years, five years down the line, they will come to the waste stream. So based on that, uh, we can estimate. So that's called material flow analysis. Other thing is that you can do sampling at the dump at the e-waste recycling facility and try to estimate based on how much e-waste is being produced. So that's uh, are uh, being done as well. Okay. Uh, so there is uh, uh, some questions on how to do recycling. Um, uh, in uh, how to do research in e-waste. Uh, so there are, uh, like again, uh, depends on what your background is. If you are an engineer, if you are a, a chemical engineer or metallurgical engineer, I will suggest you should try to work on precious metal recovery. If you are an electronic, if you are an environmental engineer, if you can uh, try to understand the environmental fate and transport of the contaminants uh, coming from e-waste, uh, informal e-waste disposal in the environment. So there are, uh, if you are a, uh, if you are a public health person or for, if you have a medical background, you can look at the human health impact from EU electronic waste uh, in terms of uh, chemicals, which is leaching from e-waste. So there are a lot of different ways uh, uh, you can uh, look at in terms of uh, uh, your e-waste uh, management. Okay, so let's get back to our uh, here. If we have any question here, I think we have a couple of questions here. So we'll take that and I think, uh, in some industry, I've seen that there are auction of e-waste in a lot wise. Is it correct way to dispose the e-waste? Yes, uh, Tapos uh, Nanda Sahu, it is actually the auction. If it is being done to authorized recyclers, uh, which that industry is supposed to do. So if it is going to authorized recyclers, then it is the correct way of doing it. Uh, if it is going into the informal sector where we you are not, uh, the industry is not keeping an eye on how that uh, waste is being managed, then it is not being done properly. So I hope that it is being, uh, 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 it's, it, is, uh, uh, it is being, uh, since it's from an industry, I would assume that they are uh, looking at, uh, uh, because as per the e-waste management rules, they are supposed to give it only to the authorized recyclers. And since they are being, it's being auctioned, uh, they, it should be done uh, on that uh, way as well. Um, so uh, there is one kindly provide us the document template, the standard operating procedure followed at the educational institution for e-waste management. We are in the process of implementing in our college. Yes, so uh, Madhushudan uh, ji, please uh, uh, put that uh, question on uh, the discussion forum. Although uh, I think uh, our the TA, Mr. Varaprasad is online. I would request him to keep a note of this and we'll, we'll give you some examples of how uh, a standard operating procedure at educational institutions. So it is available on, on Google, but uh, we will provide you uh, anyway, okay. Uh, how to manage electronic waste at community level? So again, at community level, you can collect the e-waste, but then to do the, and you can do the, uh, what you can do is you can uh, uh, try to segregate plastic, paper, plastic, metals, glass, and then have the plastic, metals, and glass being recycled. But the major problem which comes from the printed wireboard, that should go into uh, uh, into your uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, that should go to a formal recycling company uh, that uh, unless you come up with a company because that requires uh, a high tech uh, engineering high tech uh, extraction process okay so that's the where uh, you need to do that uh, so in terms of uh, 
uh, now we have how to start business in electronic waste management again uh, uh, you it depends you have to first get uh, to, depends on what you want to be whether you want to be a uh, collector whether you want to be a recycler or uh, whether you want to have uh, uh, like a, having a set up a, a precious metal recovery plan so based on that uh, you can uh, uh, you have to tie up with the municipality you have to tie up with the industry you have to make sure you get enough waste coming to you and you have to get those uh, technologies. Uh, there are technology providers who can provide you those pyrometallurgical, hydrometallurgical processes and all that. So that's how you will possibly get in there. So I think I have answered your question, but still, if, uh, if you have not, please put that uh, on the discussion forum and we'll do that. Now, Mangala Giris is talking about toxic pollution index. Is, uh, is, is it taken for air, soil, and water pollution collectively? You can do that. That's again, uh, I see we have, uh, because you have air pollution, we have soil pollution, we have water pollution happening from, if you're talking from electronic po electronic waste point of view, say yes, we can take these three together in a certain weighted average to get the toxic pollution index. Uh, we'll try to look for some more information on toxic pollution index that you are trying to, uh, and put that in uh, in the in the discussion forum for you as well. Uh, but uh, uh, based on uh, the, that's what you are suggesting is kind of makes sense. So you can have air, soil, and water uh, pollution together, and you can take a weighted average in certain form, and that will give you a toxic pollution index. So it is already uh, six twenty-seven by my watch. Uh, so it's almost. Uh, uh, time to uh, we can we have to stop this uh, uh, live session. So good questions. Uh, you guys kept me busy, which is very very good. That's what I want. Um, uh, it's uh, always uh, uh, nice uh, to have uh, uh, interaction with the students and some very good questions uh, were there. I wish you those of you who have registered for the exam. I wish you all the best. And uh, we will still we will not have uh, further live session for this course since it's only a four week course we have only one live session uh, but uh, you can the discussion forum will be active all the way up to your exam day and even a couple of days after the exam day so please uh, any question you have put in on the discussion forum and we will answer you there so again thank you for registering for this course thank you for coming today and spending time with us i hope it was useful for you thank you and bye bye